of what I was talking about yesterday. You see, Dr. Shorosh in the debate, he mentioned one of the stup stu most stupendous feet of Hazrat Isa al -Islam, Jesus. And he quoted from John, Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, verse 13. He quoted, he says, no man has ascended into heaven. No man has ascended into heaven except the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus. Except the Son of Man who descended from heaven, who is in heaven. That's John chapter 3 verse 13. He quoted that. No man has gone up except Jesus. But the man hadn't gone up when this thing was written. No man has ascended into heaven. No man has ascended into heaven except the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus. Except the Son of Man who descended from heaven. Who uh, sorry guys, the microphone was off. Uh oh. So I was talking and the microphone was off. I apologize. What we will do now? Should we go and do live broadcast again to fix this mistake? Because I want you to download the video. Uh, I want you to download the video. Uh, all right. So what? this is what I will do. I will stop this uh, uh, broadcast because I don't want it to start with bad voice and you did not hear me. Shall I do that? And we will go back. The same topic, the same name, nothing will change. I will delete this broadcast and we will start from zero. So those who download the videos will not have a problem. It's okay, you think? But then you have to cut the video in the beginning. Okay, let's start from zero. Let's say zero was here. This is zero. Okay, I will fix that later. This is the that. This is zero. Dr. Shorosh in the debate, he mentioned one of the stup st most stupendous feet of Hazrat Isa al -Islam, Jesus. And he quoted from John, Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, verse 13. He quoted, he says, no man has ascended into heaven. No man has ascended into heaven except the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus. Except the Son of Man who descended from heaven who is in heaven. That's John chapter 3 verse 13. He quoted that. No man has gone up except Jesus. But the man hadn't gone up when this thing was written. Did you hear what he said? This is stupid idiot. He forgot that he himself in different videos, he said, in different debate, he said that the book of John written more than 60 years after Jesus uh, was crucified. But he's saying now that this is did not happen yet when Jesus, when this book is written, Jesus was not in heaven yet. 
which means he's speaking against Quran, speaking against Islam, for the Quran confirmed that Jesus in heaven now. Do you see the stupidity? He himself, he said, this book written more than 60 years after Jesus. And now he is saying, but when this book was written, Jesus was not in heaven yet. That's mean this is written in the same day where Jesus was alive still. Listen carefully what he said. Ascended into heaven, except the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus. Except the Son of Man who descended from heaven, who is in heaven. That's John chapter 3 verse 13. He quoted that. He quoted that. No man has gone up except Jesus. But the man hadn't gone up when this thing was written. See? <laughs> it, it hasn't happened there. It ha is not happening when this was written. Listen carefully, Muslims. This is stupid idiot because he was spanked by Sharush and he lost his mind. He just admitted that this book is written when Jesus was not yet in heaven, which destroyed all his debate, claiming that the Bible written long after Jesus. How stupid you are. Continue. What is the excuse? The ascension had not happened. And the man is talking that no man has ascended into heaven except the son of man, Jesus, who descended from heaven. Did he descend from heaven? You see, Muslims, he is saying, did Jesus descend from heaven? This guy, he is a kafir and he is insulting Allah. Yes, the Quran says Jesus descended from heaven. Let us go to the Quran. And everybody will say in a second that you are a kafir, you are an infidel, and you are a liar. Where was Jesus before he came to earth according to the Quran? The Quran will tell us. Read carefully, Muslims. And let us see how did that insulted Allah and expose Muhammad lies. O people of the book, commit no excuse in your religion, nor say of Allah out but the truth. Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, was was not there's no more here between two brackets to explain supposedly a messenger of Allah and his word which he bestowed on Mary so what was a Jesus was the word of God in heaven so even the Quran confirmed that the that Jesus the Messiah he descended from heaven as the word of God if you don't like this translation by the way we can change it for you this is Yusuf Ali if you don't like this translation here we go Hilali and Muhammad Khan Maybe Hilali will help you better. He said that Allah, and he is his word, and here he added the word being, instead of this is not in the Quran, this is fabrication. Bestowed in Mary. So Jesus the Messiah was the word of God bestowed in Mary. And where was the word of God? It was in heaven. If you don't like Hilali Ahmad Khan, we can give you a different translation. Shakir, just name it and we will show it to you. All of them confirm that Jesus the Messiah is the word of God which descended from heaven. So when did that he say what he said, he just got his prophet busted because obviously you do not believe in what your prophet said. Obviously, you believe that Jesus at that moment, he never descended from heaven and Jesus was not in heaven when this book was written, which means after the crucifixion of Jesus, still Jesus was not in heaven. Or you are saying that this book written in the time of Jesus, when Jesus was alive, and this is what you are saying here. So whatever you say, whatever the excuse is, the excuse is more stupid than what you are trying to say to us to get a point. Now, how he will prove to us that Jesus was not descended from heaven? Listen carefully and die with me laughing. Why Jesus? How the proof that Jesus was not descended from heaven? Luke tells us that when he was eight days old, Luke tells us, mm. when he was eight days old, he was circumcised mm. and named Jesus by the angel when he was in his mother's womb. Mm. So where did he come out from? From his mother's womb. See? See the stupidity? This is against the Quran. 
because now he's excused saying that Jesus, he did not come from God, he come from his mother womb. But the fact, it's Allah who placed the word, his word, in the mother of Jesus' womb, and she gave birth to Jesus, according to the Quran. So this guy, he disrespect Islam, insult Muhammad, make fun of him, and now he is getting him Muhammad busted. For the Quran confirm that Jesus, in, in many, not only in this verse, by the way, in many verses, that Jesus is the word of God, which persuaded in Mary, and a spirit which Allah, he breathed into Mary. So even the spirit of Jesus is a spirit from Allah, according to the Quran. And even the Quran confirmed that the spirit which is in the Messiah is a proceeding from God. Read carefully. Not only he is his word bestowed on Mary, but he is the spirit proceeding from him. This is why the only one is called in the Quran or in Islam. Ruhullah, the spirit of Allah, is Jesus. Adam is not Ruhullah. Muhammad is not Ruhullah. The only one have two names in the Quran and in the, in the, in the Hadith. According to Muhammad, he is Kalimatullah wa Ruhahu. The Quran confirmed that. Kalimatahu alati alqaha ila Maryam, which is sent down to Mary. So this liar, he just confirmed that the Quran is a book of lies in order to fight Christianity. And he confirmed too that he don't believe that the book of John written after Jesus is written during the time of Jesus, which means proven to us that all his debate previously, it was a lie because all his debate, he says, the book of, uh, of John was written long after Jesus. Now, if we continue with him, let us laugh more. Go ahead, do that. He said he descended from heaven. Who saw him coming down? The nurses and whoever were helping Mary in the stable, they saw this Jesus, this puny little child with all the filth and the muck, which made his mother impure for 40 days, according to Jewish law, coming out of his mother's womb. So if, a, if Jesus came from his mother's womb, that's mean this is where he was always? Isn't it the Quran says he was the word of God? Obviously, did that. He don't believe in the Quran. He don't believe that Jesus was in the heaven as the Word of God, which confirming the same book of John, chapter one, verse number one. In the beginning, it was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is the God. And then, in verse number fourteen, it says, "And the Word became a flesh." So this is stupid. He speak against the Quran, saying, "No, Jesus was not the Word of God before he was a man." He was in his mother's womb. He never was in heaven. He was, he was never with Allah as a word of God. He was never sent as a spirit from Allah. You see how he exposed his prophet. Let us continue. Now they said, no, he descended from heaven. Who is in heaven? And who is in heaven? But the man was on earth and is having a rough time with the Jews. He's in hell. The Jews are giving hells to him. And he said, Hold on, we have a Muslim trying to, to defend to defend the, that. Let us show you. Just to show you how Muslims, they when they defend the that, they get busted too. He says, seriously, the word was bestowed on Mary to create Jesus. Yes, he came from Mary womb. You are ignorant dummy. Everything in creation is the word of God. We'll prove it. Because Allah, when he created Adam, the Quran says, similarity between Adam and Jesus that Allah, if he said to him, be, and he was. But neither Adam, neither Jesus was created by saying, be. Show me where it says that, where he did that. It says Allah, he sent his angel, sorry, his spirit, and he breathed into Mary. And this is how she became having a child in her womb. He breathed, he did not say, be. Show me where it says. The creation, according to the Quran, as you claim, Proving that you Muslims are ignorant, you do not know even your Quran, and you are contradicting the Quran, and you are exposing Allah. Allah never created anything by B. The Bible says, God said, let be light, and light was. Allah created light, not by saying be light. He created the earth, not by saying be earth. He created the trees, not by saying, it says in the Quran, we created everything by our hands. By what? by our hand let me show you seriously yes seriously ignorant they don't know what is written in their book 
they open their mouth and the more they speak, the more they do poo poo. All right. Let us go to the Quran. <clears throat> so everybody will laugh with us in a second. Here you will see how the Muslims, when they speak about religion, their religion specifically, not only about our belief, they don't know what they are talking about. Let us see what the Quran said. <clears throat> We start with those verses in the Quran. Actually, you know what? Let me let me get you busted from your prophet. Why I want to go? Because you might say to me the Quran doesn't say so, etc. So let us get you busted from your prophet. Your prophet is the best to help me to get Muhammad to to get Islam busted. Let us see. <clears throat> Let's see if we can find it in this website. Uh... <laughs> Do you see it? In the right hand of Allah and the right hand of Allah. However, let me show you where the hadith is saying. I'm trying to find the hadith where your prophet said that four things are created by the hands of Allah. By the hand of Allah specifically. He said, the throne, the heaven, Adam, and the pen. Uh, I cannot find the hadith here. Let me try a different hadith. And in a second, you will see how Muslims, they help us to get Allah busted. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Even Allah, he writes with his hand. Uh, okay. See this website. It's not fast to find things. But anyway, I have I have the reference in front of me in Arabic, but we can show it in English too. Uh, this is the hadith. It says, خلق الله أربعة أربعة أشياء بيده العرش وجنات عدن وآدم والقلم. And this is صحيح الإسناد صحيح حديث. It is صحيح. And وقال الذهبي this is an authentic hadith. So Allah created Adam by his hand. He did not create him by saying B. If you don't believe this is what it says, I can click at Google Translation and I say translate to English. Here we go. It says, Allah created four things in his hand. The throne, the garden of Eden, and Adam and the pen. By his hand not by saying be so do you see how the quran is a stupid book so when you say to me allah he created by b well he did not say be to adam he fashioned him as mud then after he fashioned him as a person as an idol then he breathed into him and then after that even after that it, it doesn't work yet still it took time for adam to be accomplished as a living being and this is, can be found in the Quran if we go here. <clears throat> Let us see. Here we go. Chapter 15, verse number 29. 
it says how Allah, you can read it from the verse before it if you want. Allah, he told the angels, I am about to create a man from sounding clay, from mud, molded into shape. So he made a shape. First, he had to make the clay. Then he make a shape. And then after that, after we fashioned, fashioned him, we breathe into him. And this is how we created Adam. Where is B? So you are ignorant and your prophet is ignorant. And this is a contradiction for what you believe. And the Quran proved that Muhammad is a fraud for he did not say to Adam B. And he never was. Actually, in different verse in the Quran it says, وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا if you go and read the interpretation, you will see in Ibn Kathir that the human being, he was asking Allah, he was ever hasty, asking Allah to finish him fast before the sun set. So where is B? Hmm? Chapter 17, verse number 11. If we go right now as we speak to Ibn Kathir, we will find that Ajula here speaking about Adam asking Allah to finish him fast before the sun set because it's getting late. So, do you see how we got you busted? Yeah, well, you just told me example. Okay, guys, just, exactly. I am the one who mentioned this verse. You, you see how, how foolish what your, your answer is? You, you are the one. I am the one who mentioned this verse that Allah said similarity of Adam is the same as Jesus. He said to him, be and he was. But we are just showing you that Allah created Adam by fashioning a, fashioning a, a mud and then he breathed into him. Well, so what is B? That is a contradiction. Do you see guys how they help us? If Allah, he created Adam by saying B. So why he is saying that I did fashion him and then after I made the mud and fashioned him as an idol, then I breathed into him. Huh? It, it can't be both. Because either you said be and he was, or you fashioned him and it took your process. Process number one, we have to mix dust with water. Process number two, we mix the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, after we bring the water and the mud, we mix it. And then we fashioned the person. We made him as an idol. And then after that, we breathe into him. Do you see anywhere the word be? If it is B, there's no need to bring mud, there's no need to fashion him, there's no need to breathe into him, but this is not what happened in the Quran. So literally, Allah is a fool, and the one who wrote the Quran is Muhammad, and he is a fool, because this is totally a contradiction. So the Messiah before, if we ask any Muslim, where was the Messiah before he became the Messiah, they will say he was the word of God. That make him coming from heaven. I wasn't the word of God. You were not the word of God. None of us was the word of God. The Messiah is the word of God. Who is the father of the Messiah? Who is the one who made Mary have a child? They will say Allah. So who is the father of Jesus? This is the answer they cannot bring. They will say it's a miracle. Well, exactly. Jesus is miracle for he is God. Do you see it? So when you make fun of, the, of Jesus was not in heaven, and the Quran says, no, Jesus was the word of God sent down to Mary. Actually, in Arabic, it says, al -qaha. Do you know what al qaha mean? Sent down. He threw it from high. This is what al qaha mean. And where is Jesus' spirit is coming from? From the spirit of Allah. This is why you will see your own translation saying that Jesus is a spirit proceeding from Allah. Is it true? It says a proceeding. Yes, read carefully. This is your Muslim translation. So he is his word. You see how big the word is? Which is bestowed in Mary, which means sent down to Mary. That's what bestowed mean. So before he was a man, he was the word of God. And before he became a man, he was a word and a spirit proceeding from him. You are not proceeding from him. I am not proceeding from him. I am a child of Adam. Jesus is not. Do you see it? This is how we got Didat busted. Now let us continue with Didat and laugh a little bit. But the most important here, by the way, not only he, he exposed the Islam as, as a stupid teaching of Muhammad, he just confirmed. He is in heaven. 
So in the next, he just confirmed that he was a liar. He was a liar when he said the Bible was not written in the time of Jesus. I'm not saying, by the way, the Bible written in the time of Jesus, but he is the one who said this book written more than sixty years after Jesus, and now he's saying, but when this book is written, Jesus was not in heaven yet. <laughs> You remember the five major revisions? In the sixth major revision, the words who is in heaven is now eliminated. In the revised standard version, who is in heaven is hey, My friend, this is translation, it's stupid. I can show you the same in your Quran. Everyone have different words, not only different words, different sentences. The whole sentence disappear. Continue. It's taken out because then it's not fitting. The mm -hmm. man is here on earth and says, who is in heaven? What heaven? So, guys, it's not fitting. The one is not in heaven yet. <laughs> this hell that you're in, is that your heaven? Number two, the book gives you devilish advice. The Bible, if it's the word of God, listen to what it says. It says, give strong drink, hard liquor, strong drink, hard liquor, to him who is perishing, anybody who's about to die, any nation is about to perish, what you do, give them strong drink, give them hard liquor. Open your book, open the Bible, and if you have it, check it up. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 6 and 7. Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 6 and 7. Open your Bibles and see the advice given, this devilish advice given by God. Guys, just to show you that this guy is not only a fraud, he is a liar, lying to the crowd, they are Muslims, and whatever he said they would accept. If we go right now to the book, this is the verse he is talking about, all right? But you will see there's tons of verses in the Bible speaking about not to drink. You see, do not drink wine or strong drink. The book of number, he shall abstain from wine and strong drink. Uh, uh, you can read, there's endless numbers. But just to show you how fraud this guy, he just said this is the command of God. Did he say that or I'm making things up? He just said this is the command of God. Listen carefully what he said. I will play it again. Chapter 31, verses 6 and 7. Open your Bibles and see the advice given, this devilish advice given by God. Okay, let us go to the Bible first of all and see what happened here. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. This is the mother teaching her son, saying, if somebody is dying from pain, give him strong drink so he don't feel pain. This is not about, and by the way, when the dad was dying, they gave him drugs, drugs, for he was suffering badly from pain, very bad pain. Seven years, the guy, he cannot talk and he lived by medication which is way worse than any alcohol. So if you are saying that a person who is dying, we should not give him any medication so he will ease his pain, that's mean you should not take any medication yourself, which is nothing but a drugs. Years he could not open his mouth. He cannot speak and he was living, living by ease pain medication. Even he have a blood poisoning. Even God, he stopped his tongue from moving. He cannot even talk no more. Nine years? Okay, nine years. I, maybe I'm, not, I'm wrong. With that. So imagine how they, they, how they fool you, saying that God teaching, the mother she was teaching her son, and then saying that this is supposed to be devilish. Okay, let us go to the Quran. Is it your Quran says that Allah, he made a miracle, which is strong alcohol. And this is a sign from Allah. And he said it's good. You just said, everybody heard him saying that this is devilish. So how come Allah saying that from a fruit of palm and grape, you can make strong drink, which is alcohol, and it is good. And it's even a sign from Allah for those who they are wise. Do you see it? You can make good money from it and you enjoy it. 
And what? Sakaran. He did not say just wine. He says Sakaran, which means you get drunk. Do you see it? If you don't like this translation, we can change it for you. What translation you like? Huh? What translation you like? Is that alcohol Allah praising? Yes, it is alcohol Allah praising. And here between two brackets, they say, this is was before the order of forbid, for, forbidden the drink, the alcoholic drink. So what kind of a stupid God is God? He praised one, he praised alcohol yesterday, and then after 10 weeks, he said, no, I'm going to forbid it. So we just confirmed that the Quran and did that, agreeing that the one who says to you, drink alcohol is giving a devilish advice. But this is the Quran promise. And not only that, the Quran promise you in heaven rivers of wine. A river of wines, if the, if the wine is devilish, and the verse you quote for us about a person who is dying from pain, He's dying from pain. This is not about making him drunk to enjoy. This is to eat his pain. Like somebody want to take his teeth. So they give him a drink so he will not feel anything. They want to cut a surgery. They want to do a surgery for him. So they give him a drink so he will not feel anything. So you are a liar and you are a fraud saying that this is devilish when the purpose of it is mercy. At that time, there was no drugs to use. And this is the only way to ease pain. So look how this filthy did that. He said he made what is supposedly to ease the pain of a human being. A devilish thing. And later he himself, he lived for many years under drugs which is forbidden supposedly. Not alcohol. You were taking him morphine. Morphine. Cocaine. To make you stay alive without pain. So do you see the hypocrisy? And why Allah is saying you make good money from it, strong drink, alcohol, which is a goodly provision. Do you see guys the word goodly provision? People, do you see the Quran saying the word goodly provision? But he just said this is devilish. He just said this is devilish. So how it was devilish for you and it is goodly provision for Allah. And you're a prophet, he used to drink wine like crazy. And his followers, they used to be drunk 24 hours, 7 days a week. This is why the Quran said a verse which is very funny. Allah saying to the Muslim, because everybody starts laughing at them, please, 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 when you pray, don't approach a prayer when you are drunk. Do you see it? Or who you believe, approach not salat when you are drunken do you see it and why muhammad he made this verse because the christian and the jews they were laughing at muhammad and his followers and even those who they are arab who they are not christian and jews they are look at this guy he claimed to be a prophet and the ones who are behind him they are falling apart and then the, uh, drunk the verse says that not me and how I can blame them you see the filthy Muhammad when he was weak and he enjoyed drinking he seduced people by drinking saying this is a miracle from Allah later when Muhammad he ate the poison and he is dying he cannot drink no more he forbidden the drinking because he cannot drink himself So how in one verse Allah, he prays, drinking, says this is a good provision, and now you are saying to me this is devilish. I will tell you why. Because you are stupid following the devilish Muhammad, who is a fraud. This is why the, the, the hadith says that the Arab, they were making fun of Muhammad. He enjoyed his followers in order in the morning. He changed it after noon. Second one. Tell us more so we can laugh. Take notes, Muslims. Wine is devilish, and Allah says it's a good provision. That if people are dying, like the aborigines of Australia, 
the white man has been giving him drink. The Red Indians, you go to America, you go to Canada, see what is the, the fate of these people. Drink, drink, drink. First of all, nobody drink in the world as much as Muslims. And if we go to heaven of Allah, what we will find, we will find a river of a drink. This is the this is the fallacy of Muslims when they claim that they are people who not don't drink. Actually, if you search right now, how many people die every year from drinking perfume? This is how much they are obsessed with drinking. They die from drinking perfume because it's forbidden to buy drinks. So they die to do what do they, they buy perfume and they drink it. Colonial. You can search it right now in Google. Give us number two. And we just showed you your prophet praising the alcohol. You are the devilish man, not our book. Our book is speaking about clearly the book speak against drinking, as you say, abstain from a drinking a strong drink. Abstain. Even even you know in, in the in the in the in the letters of the disciples, you will see it says what the Muslim they make they make fun of Paul. They say Paul is a bad person. When it says that a drunken will not enter the kingdom of God. Gambler and drunken will not enter the kingdom of God. This is in our book. In your book it says Allah forgive all sin. So don't worry about being drunken. In your book it says fornication is okay. Actually your book it says you can do muta. You can rent women for one night stand. In my book, it says, drunken will not enter the heaven of God. So do you see how they lie? And this guy, he claimed that he is an expert in the Bible. So how come he do not know of the existence of that verse? Do you think he do not know? This guy, he quoted it many times, Paul. He quoted it many times, the disciple. How come he do not know? Liars, no dignity, no honesty, no honor. Look what the Bible says. And let us get this filthy liar busted. The first Corinthian 6.10. You can read the whole chapter if you want. It says any translation you wish. Nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunken, nor verbal abusers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Do you see it? According to your religion, if you drink, it's okay. Even sex is okay. Here you see the fallacy and the fraud of the Muhammadan when they speak about their religion is against evil when the fact your God himself he promised you virgins and nothing around them except naked boys and river of wines and not only that your prophet used to drink wine always if we go in the hadith we will find the following Anyone, if you ask any Muslim, what is the word? What is the word for wine in Arabic? It says Nabid. Nabid. Look, look at this translation. Look, look, look at the liars. They make it from the grape, the dry grape. They make Nabid. <laughs> um, my mouse froze. Hold on. Oh boy. Okay, now it's coming. Muhammad, he was even, he used to teach people how to make wine. I asked Abu Jafar about Nabid, and he said, Ali ibn al Hussein, may Allah, he blessed him with him, would have Nabid made for him at night and he would drink it in the morning. Read carefully. This is always about Nabid. Do you see it? And later Muhammad, he forbid them from doing it because he cannot drink it no more. 
The Nabid was prepared for Muhammad in a big bowl of a stone. And they make it for him from all kinds of fruits. The Muslim, they will say to you, Oh, Nabid is not a, is not a, is not wine. You can go and take the word to any Arabic dictionary and you will see what the word is. Nabid is wine. And Muhammad was drinking wine. Let us see. I wanted to make this video short, but you can, you guys, you can cut it off pieces, you know. All right. Oh. <laughs> uh. I'm just uh, trying to find a hadith. Let us see. Muhammad, not only he was drinking wine, he used even to use it to do a pollution with it. Uh, but I want to see if I can find this hadith in Arabic. Read carefully and laugh. I was sitting alone with Ibn Abbas, Allah blessed with him, etc., blah, 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 near the Kaaba, and came a Bedouin to him, and he says, what is the matter uh, that I see that the, the progeny of your uncle uh, uh, supply honey and milk as a drink to the traveler, where you supply al nabid And here, by the way, they say, between two brackets, water sweetened with date. Look at this lie. Look at this lie. Water is sweetened by you know, the bead is the is the juice of the grape or of the palm tree or any kind of a fruit which is a stronger drink which is alcohol. And then what it says? It says it's due to your poverty or due to your close uh, fastness. Thereupon Abu Abbas he says a praise blah 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 you know, and then Muhammad he taught them how to make it let us show you a different hadith just to confirm because here they are trying to make it not uh, wine uh, let us see this one are they going to say a fruit mixed with wine mixed with the uh, with water sweetened by water <laughs> let us see we brought to him a cup containing nabid Whereupon Allah Messenger said, Why don't you cover it? Do you see it? This is what Nabi. Actually, you can go right now, and if we go right now to uh, to Google Translation, let us do this. Hold on. I will do this. I will use Google Translation to translate those hadith. Let us see what, what Google Translation will come with. Just to show you how they lie when they translate. This is the page. I will use Google Translation and that make it what? Make the Arabic and the English both sides translate to English. Right in the front of your eyes. Ah, because here the what hold on what the trying what is this what language is that Abu Bakr Hadith Jabir did not translate the where is the hadith this is showing us there's no translation for hadith okay let's try the other one hold on I don't know what happened 
did not translate the hadith at all. It translates only the reference in the top. Uh, even the title did not translate it. I don't know why, see? And even here it says takhmir. Takhmir, you know like with takhmir? Like you put it until it is, uh, you know, you cover, when you make the wine, you have to cover it until it takes time. And it's hot and it takes time to be processed. And that's what takhmir is. Uh, let us see. Um, we will try a different hadith and we'll try a translation to it. <clears throat> okay, let's try this one. All right. Let us see if this one will work. In front of you, I will click translate from Arabic to English. The left is translated by Muslims. Okay. Let us see. Uh, where is the translation? I don't see even anywhere the translation. What? Fakala Rajulan. What is this? This is not English translation. What's happening here? That's funny. Let me see. Give me a second. Because this is not translation. Ah, I'm losing connection. Did I lose connection? Oh boy. It's mean fermentation, okay. No, but uh, why here is the translation is not coming? I need to try to see why the translation is not working. Give me a second. I will click at the translation. It says English, so, ah, it says unknown. This is why, hold on. It says the language which is translated from unknown. So I need to choose that, hold on. Uh, choose another language, hold on. Arabic. Yeah, this is why it was not translating. It's just giving us a text. Here we go. Now we will have a translation. Okay. Let us do again. I hope that will work. Why it's not happening? Uh -huh. It's changing. You see, it keeps saying to me, unknown. The language is unknown. You see, in the top. And the translation is translating to Arabic. But I do not want that. I want from Arabic to English. Okay, let's do this. Hold on. I will open it in the independent, uh, you know, uh, page, and I will choose. I will copy the text in Arabic. Give me a second, just to show you how they lie and how we can get them busted so easy. All right. This is Google translation in front of your eyes, all right? I'm going to copy the text from Arabic as it is in the front of your eyes. I did not try it yet to see what will happen. This is the Arabic text as you see. I will copy it. And I will paste it. In Google translation, as you see, here we go, in the front of your eyes. All right. Uh, look, the word Nabith here is not translated. I mean, look how lucky we are. The word Nabith is here, is not translated. <coughs> and here, Nabithan is not translated. What is, ah, look, look at this. Google is messed up. Detected language is what? Sindhi? This is why it's messed up. Let us see. Go Arabic, you idiot. Stupid Google. What's Sindhi? Okay. Let us see now. All right. Here we go wine wine do you see it this is what the prophet was drinking finally wine he was saying to them how come the others are giving different drink but you are giving us wine <laughs> <laughs> 
It was the Muslims who served in wine. Do you see the word wine? Muhammad was a drunk man. The Muhammadan were drunk and the Quran confirmed that. And Allah, he promised you a lot of wine in heaven to the point it is rivers. Yeah, well, you know, I, I keep choosing it. It, it, it detect wrong language, stupid Google, what I can do, you know? So you see how they, they say devilish? The Bible forbid us from being a drunk. You see, the Bible teach us that there's things, anything, anything you use, if you exceed, it is wrong. Too much wine will kill you. Too much salt will kill you. Too much sugar will kill you. Too much water will drown you. Too much air, you will not be able to breathe. So he lies saying that the Bible teaching people to be drunk. When the verse he quote for us, this filthy liar, is speaking about a dying man to ease his pain. Let us continue with this fraud. What else? Give us more so we can love more. Until now, he did nothing except exposing Islam. By his help, we will have many Muslims leave Islam. You can buy bottle now. Bottle franchise was the first franchise that we ever received in South Africa was the bottle. Give him drink. You want so you see the liar? He's saying now that the Bible says give him a drink. This is what they do in the store. When the verse he caught for us, it says, give a drink for the dying person. And he put it in the screen. I mean, do you see how we make a drama of something not real? Do you see the filth? Do you see, do you see how filthy he is? When the verse saying, give a drink, a stronger drink for the one is dying to ease his pain. He make it, the Bible says, give him a drink in the store. When we have tons of verses speaking against drinking, and we showed you even that the Bible speaks clearly saying that the drunken people will not enter heaven. No dignity, no honesty. Honesty is very important when you want to debate somebody about anything. And be that Maybe Muslims, they think he was successful because simply he go on the stage, he attacked the Bible and the Christian do not know anything about, you know, he's, he debate only specifically people who do not know about Islam. He made a mistake when he debated Sharush, who is an Arab, and he got him busted with no mercy. The Bible says clearly that thieves and drunken and greedy will not enter heaven. Can you show me where in the Quran it says that the one who drink wine will not go to heaven? Can you show me? Actually, the Quran says it clearly that all those kind of sin is forgiven by Allah. The only one he don't forgive is shirk. And here we see the difference. Where a book says, if you are a drunken person, there's no place for you in heaven. If you are a thief, there's no place for you in heaven. If you are an abuser, you have no place in heaven. But we have a God, he says, that Allah, he forgive anything except shirk chapter 4 verse number 48 do you see it so we have a book saying the drunken people are not welcome in heaven and we have a book saying that drunken people are welcome in heaven for allah forgive all kind of sin except shirk and the verse in the front of you Actually, the Quran, not only that, says that a lemon is okay in Islam. A lemon. If you do not know what is a lemon, there's a guy, he went to, uh, a woman, she came to his store. And she said to him, or he, so he, his name is Nabhanu Tamar. She said, he said to her, if you enter inside my store, I have uh, more... Uh, fruits to show you he he owned uh, a palm date fruits so he went to muhammad and he told muhammad 
I did with this woman everything the man do except intercourse. Except what? Intercourse. What Muhammad said to him? He kissed her, he touched her, he had orgasm with her, but he did not do intercourse. He said to him, Muhammad, don't worry, this is a lemon. It's a small sin. It's not even counted. There's no punishment for it in Islam. And it's not even sin for Allah. Those who avoid the great sin, shameful deeds. And they look what they translate the word a lemon as a small fault. So going to a married woman, kissing her, touching her, playing with her private part, you know, masturbating with her is okay. This is called a lemon. If you don't believe me, we can open the interpretation and read what it says about Nebuchadnezzar uh, Tamar, the guy who did that with women. She is married, and not only that, she is married to a Muslim man who is doing jihad. So imagine the man who the man who is his wife sleeping with this man, or let us say having sexual relationship, because this is sex. You don't have intercourse, it's, sexu it's still sexual. He said to him, I did with her everything the man do. Everything the man do. The prophet, he says, it's okay. That is a lemon. So if giving alcohol to a man is dying to ease his pain is devilish. Teaching a man that you can have sexual relationship with the wife of a mujahid who is fighting for Allah is not devilish, right? Do you see? The story here how, how 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 those perverted people they try to switch things the truth upside down and not only that actually a lemon even drinking wine is considered wine is a lemon this is lemon too this is how they lie Let us continue. Number, uh, give us the second one. So we can laugh. Or this is number, third, number three, maybe. To make a nation to perish, you want to destroy a people, give him strong drink, says the... You see, you see, he said, we, we are going, we, we give him to perish, we give him to, to kill him. Well, the verse doesn't say that. <laughs> the Holy Bible. Let him drink and forget his poverty. Yes, forget his sorrow. And remember his. And again, this is what the mother of the king she taught her son. This is the mother of the king. When you open right away from the top, it says the mother of this person. If you don't like this translation, we can change it for you. This is King James version translation. By the way, when the Muslim they say different version of the Bible, this is just a translation, Abdul. The same as you, Muhammad, and you have Yusuf Ali, you have etc. So we have many translations. It's a translation. This is the Jewish translation. You don't like it, we go to different translation. It's just a translation. There's many, we have translation to the Bible, to all languages of the world, and every language, there's many translation for the same thing. So when a Muhammad, he tried to lie to you, go examine it yourself and you will see that this guy is nothing but a fraud. And you will notice that the Muslims, they choose a translation which is sweet them. Doesn't, like if this translation doesn't fit, like as an example, they use the one it's called ESV. Where is the ESV? Usually they use it. I'm trying to find. I think this one. Is that the ESV? No, this is CEV. Whatever. Uh, where is the ESV? Um, anyway, it doesn't matter really. But this has shown us that they have no dignity and never, never learn your book from a Muhammadan. They don't even know their book. So how we can trust them? to our book. Do you see it? And here it says, 
uh, suppose this is an advice, you know, it's an advice for the king. The mother is telling her son an advice. And the Muslims always, they try to play games with anything we have in the Bible. When we have their book saying that God of, of Islam will give you a woman with big boobs and next to them there is a strong drink, which is a cup full of wine. Is this devilish to mention to me that women with big boobs will be in my heaven and next of me a cup of wine? Do you see it? Big boobs women with a cup full of wine. So how come in your heaven, and this is the house of God, if it's devilish in earth, why it's not devilish in heaven? Coward. Son of Muta. No wonder that you've been punished badly and you could not speak for more than seven or nine years, as people they say. Continue. Let us laugh more. <clears throat> we will move into this to the, the one after. Seeing, you know, as a boy, I used to go and, and the funny guys, this guy after he debated Sharush, he is making those papers to take revenge. He could not answer Sharush when he was there. Sharush is not there now, so we debate him by making papers. <laughs> see a lot of these cowboy films and when the guy is dying I see that they give him a tot they give him a drink and then, then the guy goes off peacefully the man is dying they give him drink the man is dying they give him drink dying from you see, coward coward filthy continue continue I said where did you get this idea from a man who's dying if the Muslims they give them honey in water you know they give him honey and water what if he is dying from diabetes you kill him And if we ask the Muslims what the, what the doctors were giving the that when he was like this, hmm? what they were giving him, look at this face. What, what was happening to you? Hmm? How much pain you have? And what kind of doctors, and by the way, the, the, the video contain doctors who all of them, they are non-Muslims. They are working in him. Look at this face. You can imagine how much pain he is suffering from. So they were giving him cocaine, he were giving him morphine, they were giving him all kind of medicine, which is nothing but powerful drugs to make you, you know, unaware of what's happening to ease your pain. In the time where the Bible written those verses, we are talking about thousands of years ago, they don't have cocaine and morphine and those medicine. So what they will give him? Are you a <laughs> what they will give him? <laughs> Stupid liar. Anyway, continue. Easy digestible, give you quick energy. The man is on the, on the throes of death. You give him hard drink, strong drink, hard liquor. No, that's what the Bible says. Give him hard drink. So they give hard drink. A man is dying, give him hard drink. Coward. The nation is perishing, give him hard drink, hard liquor. I don't know how Shurush forgot. See, this is all, all about Sharush. This is just revenge from Sharush. You see, in the previous debate, he was quoting from the book of Peter, 2 Peter, mm. verses 1. Mm. 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 21. And Jimmy Swaggart also, amazing, they are all the evangelists are quoting the same verses. In America, Jimmy Swaggart, if you see the tape, he's quoting that verse. And you see the tape of Sharush, he's quoting the same verse. He should not quote the same verse. We should bring a new guy, a new, a new Bible. So what we will quote for you? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> you cannot be too Christian and quote the same verse. You cannot that. Haram. It's haram. The verse, I don't know if he forgot yesterday because it's too many written things to read out. It says here. And the Muslim, they clap whatever he say. For the prophecy came not. Prophecy telling you things that is going to happen in the future. Came not 
by the will of man, by the impulse of man, by the whims and fancies of man. No. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. As the Holy Ghost moved them, tickled them, they wrote. See, 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 see how faithy he is? If the Holy Ghost move you, tickle you. This is tickle you. You see how faithy his statement? I wish I was there in the stage. I will meet him shish kebab. What they were told to write. And so the whole Bible is from God. Because the Holy Ghost tickled these writers to write. You see how faith he is? First of all, this is absolutely stupid, the statement he said. They say the verse he is quoting says prophecy. Read carefully what the verses he quoted it says. You are a filthy liar like your prophet. Read carefully, guys, what it says. This is what they are the Muslim posting in the, in, the, in the screen. And this is the translation they choose. It says, for the prophecy come not. For the prophecy... Not all the Bible is a prophecy. In the Bible, there is Shaitan talking too. In the Bible, there is a woman speaking to Jesus. This is not a prophecy. In the Bible, there is a disciple asking Jesus a question. This is not a prophecy. So this filthy liar, he take words out of context and he play with it and he make it, oh, the whole Bible is a prophecy. What a fraud and a scam. As long you all mentioned the word tickling, isn't it your prophet was activated by squeezing? When the prophet, he went to the cave, an angel, his name is Jibreel. And by the way, he did not say even his name is Jibreel. He came to Muhammad and he squeezed him. And even the Muslim, they say that this Jibreel himself is the Holy Spirit. So it is not us who the Holy Spirit tickle us. It is you, Muslim, who believe that the Holy Spirit, which is Jibreel in your religion, squeezed you. Now, if I was there and I say that to do that in front of the Muslims, how many people will laugh that the prophet became a prophet after three times squeezing? And what does it squeeze him to do? To activate him? And no mayonnaise came. And what the difference between Muhammad before squeezing and Muhammad after squeezing? If we go in the Hadith, we will find the following. <clears throat> Try not to laugh. Muhammad saying that when he was in the in the cave, an angel he came to him, and he cut me, and he he you know he uh, 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 he, he squeezed me so hard, and he said to me, "Read." I said to him, "I am illiterate. I am not literate. I'm not learned." And he he, he took him again. And he squeezed him again. Look, all oh, this is story. This is Sahih. They cannot say it's not true. They cannot say it's not true. So what kind of God, in order to make Muhammad understand that now he became a prophet, he need to squeeze him. And after the squeezing, did Muhammad understood now? Nothing happened. Still, he, is a, he, he was ignorant and still is not ignorant. And the angel steps saying to him, read. The prophet says to him, I cannot read. He squeezed him again and he says, read. He said to him, I cannot read. He squeezed him for the third time. And by the way, why three times? In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Why everything in the cult of Islam is a three time if you Muslims are against Trinity? So the angel, he cut me and he squeezed me until I could not bear it no more, which means Muhammad, he cannot breathe. The angel come to him and ask him to read. The prophet replied, I do not know how to read. And then the prophet added, the angel cut me falsely and pressed me so hard and I, that I could not bear it no more. Like almost Muhammad dying. Then he released me. And again, he said to me, read. So when you laugh at the Bible says, the Holy Spirit tickled them. You are, a you are a joker and you are a donkey. The Holy Spirit in Islam squeezed your prophet, did not tickle him. And the verse you are quoting for us, it doesn't say that the whole book is inspiration. Because when we say inspiration, I can say that those who wrote the gospel, as an example, inspired by God. However, inside the inspiration, there's the word of man too. How that can be? Because they are reporting incident. As an example, even the verses you, go, you quote for us a second ago about the king. His mother, she said to him, prophesying for him. 
When shaitan he speak to God, this is not God talking, this is shaitan talking, and this is existing in your Quran too. So this coward, in order to make a point, he tried to make a mockery, but the mockery always will work against you, not against us. Continue, let us laugh more. As they were moved by the Holy Ghost, as the Holy Ghost moved them, tickled them, See? they wrote Tickle what them. they were told to write. Squeeze you, huh? And so the whole Bible is from God. Coward, we got you busted in this one. Continue. Yeah, the Holy Ghost tickled these writers to write what they wrote. Uh -huh. But the Bible, get this word of God or not. I don't know why they cut here the, this part of the video. This is the, the Muslims video. I did not know why they cut it. They cut this part. On that human level we were talking, sane, sober people, I want your judgment. Okay. Does God Almighty command his emissary, his prophets, to do shameful things? Will he? No way. No way. No. And he has it recorded in his book? No way. This is the prince of the prophets. Prince Sh sure. of the prophets, according to Shorosh. Sure. Isaiah, he calls him prince of the prophets. His book, the book of Isaiah, he calls it the fifth gospel. If there are four gospels in the New Testament, this you can be added and make it the fifth gospel, according to Shorosh. This prince of the prophets, this is what God does to him. At the same time, speak the Lord to Isaiah. God spoke to Isaiah, the son of Amos, saying, Go and lose the sackcloth from thy loins. You know the sackcloth that you're tying? Untie that. And put the, off thy shoes from thy foot. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. A prophet of God, for three years, he's walking up and down the streets of Jerusalem or wherever he was, absolutely naked. In Jerusalem, guys, listen carefully. Did that he admit? I want you to cut this part especially for those who will make this video later. The one who ordered a prophet of God to work naked, this is shameful behavior, disgusting. This is cannot be from God. Be my witness. Who said that? Did that. However, this filthy idiot, the verse says to move your sp specific part of a clothing. What is that? If you go right now, let me search in Google to show you the images. Give me a second. This is what God he said to Isaiah to take off. This is a dress or a custom you you put in the top of you this is not really your clothing this is where prophet or high rabbi they put in the top of them do you see this thing let me draw it for you for those who do not know what i'm talking about give me a second Secondly, where you got that he was walking naked in Jerusalem, you coward, son of Muta. This is the part they wear in the top of them. And don't wear no more shoes. This is the part where it cover their private part too, in the front. So it go down all the way here. This is what nakedness mean. However, if I was naked in the desert, that's not a problem. But did that he said that he was naked in Jerusalem or wherever he was because the stupid he did not know where Isaiah lived. But what if we show you Muslims that it was Allah who made his prophet do shameful things and he made him walk naked in Jerusalem. Listen carefully. It was thee that, not me, who said that do God order his prophet to do shameful things? Who said that? Did that. So we cannot say thee that did not say that no more. This is a very shameful thing. What God he ordered him, according to thee that, he ordered him to walk naked. According to thee that, Isaiah was naked in the front of men and women. Can you prove it? You cannot, for you are a liar and a fraud.
Now, as long he mentioned that, and I will, and I will play it again this part, so people will die laughing in a second. Off thy shoes from thy foot, and he did so, walking naked and barefoot. A prophet of God, for three years, he's walking up and down the streets of Jerusalem or wherever he was. Walk, walking up and down, say, show us, show us the proof of your lies, you coward liar. Now, after he said this is shameful behavior, you Muslims, I want the Muslim to see the Muslim comment about him saying this is a shameful behavior. Remember, he cannot take it back. Human level we were talking, sane, sober people, I want your judgment. I want your judgment. That's Muslims, Christians, Jews, Hindus, I want your judgment for what the that will say that this is a shameful behavior and shameful teacher. Shameful. It's not me who said that. This is a shameful. The dad said that. God Almighty command his emissary, his prophets, to do shameful things. Will he? No way. And what is a shameful thing? To walk naked. Let us go and see how Allah, he make Moses walk naked so he can show all the people of Jerusalem that his balls are big and beautiful. <laughs> Did he just say that this is a shameful? He said that, right? He said that. When the Bible is not speaking about that at all. You are a liar and you are a fraud. But here we have a proof that Moses was totally naked with no clothes, not only no shoes, and not a coat he took it off. Where is the clothes of rabbi or prophets? Allah Messenger said, Moses was a shy person and he used to cover his body completely because of his extensive shyness. One of the children of Israel hurt him by saying, huh, he covered his body not only uh, uh, in, in this way, only because of some defect in his skin. Either leprosy or scortal her hernia, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, or he has some other defect. Allah wished to clear Moses of what they said about him. So one day, while Moses was in seclusion, he took his, of his clothing and put them off on a stone, and he started taking a bath. So clearly he is now naked. Not like the verse in the Bible which he's trying to mislead us. He is taking a shower, taking a bath. When he had finished his bath, he moved toward the, his clothes so as to take them, but the stone took his clothes and fled. Do you see it? The stone did what? The stone took his clothes and fled. Moses picked up his stick and he ran after the stone saying, Oh stone, give me my garment, till he reached the group of Beni Israel, who saw him naked then, and found him the best of what Allah has created. Do you see it? Did that the coward, he said, that if you do such a thing, that is a shameful behavior. What kind of God he ordered his prophet to do a shameful behavior. What do you say? Yeah, there's many monks, they go and live in the desert, and there's nobody there. Adam was naked, so what? And nakedness, by the way, in the Bible, is not about you being totally naked. As an example, when Jesus was crucified, they put him in the cross naked, but he was not naked. Nakedness is taking normal clothes which you put in the top of you. That is nakedness. So depend who you are. For rabbi, for rabbi, if he is not dressed as a rabbi, this is nakedness. Because this is not his custom. And here now we see that the that he said that there is no way God will do a shameful order making his prophet walking upside down in Jerusalem and he was almost mentioning the, the penis with his hand, you know, he was moving his hand like this up and down, right? So he's talking about penis. This is how filthy that is. So if this is a shameful behavior, 
why Allah he forced Moses this is not Allah only making Moses do it he forced him to walk in the street and his penis was moving like a wave why just because he want to prove to the Jews that the penis and the balls of Moses are big and beautiful are you there Muslims now not only the story is a stupid to believe that a rock stealing the clothing and running how the, how the rock can run Allah he made the rock run Allah he made the rock steal the clothing Allah is a thief and what is the purpose of this theft Allah he made the rock to move between the Jews in the middle of Jerusalem maybe or wherever the town is until he arrived between a busy place full of Jews and then people they saw and they said wow look at the penis of Moses look at his testicles and maybe some who they are maybe gays they will say look at his ass so it is shameful to make a prophet walk naked if it is in the Bible it is not shameful if it is in Islam do you see how we got this filthy coward busted if I was there in the stage how embarrassing if I show him this story how many people will laugh at him how did that he can answer this? He will say, my prophet is a stupid. And he will say, this is the Aif Hadith, this is Sahih Bukhari. This is very authentic, you see? It says, Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith number 3404. What he will say? It's not Sahih, right? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Lasila, whatever your name, I mean, we got you busted and we answer you. You can repeat the same thing, we are laughing at you. We explain the verse, and secondly, nowhere it says that he was walking between the people naked and you are a coward like your prophet. And now how come you are not answering that your prophet saying Allah, he made Moses to prove that his penis is healthy. Because remember, they accuse him that he have a problem in his private part. Do you see what this word is? I'm going to search what this word is in Google to be sure I get the meaning right. Let's search. What does this word mean? Let us click at images. Do you see where Allah is trying to prove? Do you see it? Because this is what they accuse him. <laughs> Do you see what your God is trying to approve? Do you see what Allah, he wanted the Jews to see? They don't want to see his chest. They don't want to see his knee. They don't want to see his ass. They want them to see his penis. Do you see it? So those cowards, they make fun of themselves. How many of you will copy this video and will share it so everybody can laugh at Didat? Didat is the same guy, by the way, there's different video. If you have it, give it to me. I made a video about it. He said, the, 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 the Bible, the God of the Bible, he created the sun in Wednesday. So the earth was without light for, for how many days? The fact, the Bible says, God said light to be, and light was. So there's light already. There's a source of light. It is Muhammad who said that the sun was created in Wednesday, and before that there was no light. And this is the reference. Do you see it? This is your stupid prophet saying, Allah, he created the light in Wednesday. Be that in the debate, he was making fun of the Bible for saying the light was created in Wednesday. What is that, what is that telling me? The that is a stupid ignorant. He do not know what he is talking about. He was debating people who do not know much about Islam. So he was trying to get away with it because it's one way to attack. And then the Christian, they start only to defend. They know nothing about Islam to attack back and to get him busted. But, and this is what happened. If you are a person debating a Muslim who been trained all his life to attack Christianity and you know nothing about his cult. And this is what we are here doing, teaching you how to get them busted. And now I think you know how important it is what we are doing here, right? 
Can a Muslim use what they did now against you? He was using in the video. He cannot. He cannot. Have CB debate against Mahdi Hassan. Who is this Mahdi Hassan? A bunch of idiot. Who is this Mahdi Hassan? Mahdi Hassan. Mickey Mouse. And he has it recorded in his book. <laughs> this is the prince of the prophets. This is the prince of the prophet. And Musa is not the prince of the prophet for Islam. And he was woke naked. Totally naked. The only one which Allah spoke to him, according to the Islam. Face to face, it was Musa. Even though he did not see his face, for Allah appeared as a friar in the bushes. Allah transformed himself into a fire according to the Quran. Allah made him go naked just to prove that his penis is healthy. Allah could not find any way to prove it unless he make him naked between women and children and adult. Prince of the prophets according to Shurush, Isaiah. Because Sharur destroyed him, he cannot believe it. You know? He calls him Prince of the Prophets. His book, the book of Isaiah, he calls it the fifth gospel. If there are four gospels in the New Testament, this you can be added and make it the fifth gospel, according to Sharush. Mm -hmm. This Prince of the Prophets. This yeah, and Musa, the, he's, he, well, uh, by the way, not only Musa was, was naked, your prophet, he was totally naked when he was carrying the black stone. Actually, I can show you a hadith. Hold on. Let me see. <laughs> All right. Let us see some hadith about Muhammad. And I will show you something strong so they will not say it's not true. Here we go. This is Sahih Muslim. I was laying in my bed in my apartment in my in her house and his thigh uncovered and Abu Bakr thought permission what is uncovered the thigh of the Prophet maybe some people here do not speak good English what thigh is search Google you know we will use Google to show you what is the thigh is what is the thigh so Muhammad his clothes was naked all the way to his, his ass almost And who is there? Strangers in the house, not his wife. His wife is there, yes, but his wife, she can see him naked. What a big deal. This is what the thigh is. So his thigh is showing who is saying that Aisha and covered and Abu Bakr came and Muhammad did not fix himself. Still stay in the same same way. His thigh and his shank was, you see here between two brackets, there are things which is not true. It says thigh. And then Omar, he asked permission to come in and Muhammad did not change the way he is sitting and showing his ass all the way to his bum. And then, and the Muslim, they will say, it doesn't say that the ECP or go and search what thigh is, where it start, where it's in. And then Omar came and Muhammad still did not change the way he is sitting. And then Uthman came and when Uthman, he entered, he covered. He covered himself Muhammad he covered himself he sat down and set right his clothes look who's saying set right it was Aisha saying that not me he sat down where Uthman came and he set right his clothes which means his clothes was not right and then Aisha after the lift he said to him how come Abu Bakr came which is her father you did not fix your clothes how come Omar came did not fix your clothes 
but when Uthman he came, you fixed your clothes. Read it. Hashi said, Abu Bakr came, entered, and you did not stare, and you did not observe much care. Between two bracket, arranging your clothes. Then Umar entered, and you did not stare, and you did not arrange your clothes. Then Uthman entered, and you got up, and you set up your clothing. He said, listen carefully, Muhammad saying that. He said, should I not show modesty to the one whom one even angels show modesty? So what was Muhammad doing before this point? He was not showing modesty. Do you see it, people? Do you see it? This is the Muslim translation. Muhammad, when Umar was entering, he was not sitting with modesty. When Abu Bakr was coming, he did not sit in with modesty. When Uthman he came, he sat with modesty. Do you see it? Now imagine guys, what kind of a prophet, and we are talking about 1400 years ago, showing the nakedness all the way, and they have no, they have no panty at that time. There's no panty. And Aisha, she noticed that this is not right. Because if this is normal, if this is something the Arab used to do, Aisha, she will not notice, right? And the hadith itself, itself it says that Muhammad saying that it was not in a modesty position. So what kind, what kind of a prophet he said with men in a position wearing a clothing not fit with the modesty? but nakedness and they excuse that Uthman the angels are shy from him what does that mean he's God and look at this stupidity if if Muhammad is saying that modesty should be in the front of Uthman and the angels are next to him because he said always the angels next to him so shouldn't you show modesty to the angels you have visitors So as you see, Muhammad himself was naked. In different story, when Muhammad was carrying the black stone, his dress fell down and he was totally naked. There's a hadith, let me try. To find it. We have endless animation to make Muhammad as the same as my screen door. Let us see. Here we go. Let us see if we can find it in English. Modesty, huh? Read carefully. Zayd ibn al-Harith arrived to al Madina while the Messenger of Allah was in his house. So he went and he knocked at his door. The Messenger of Allah stood up naked, dragging his garment, and he went to the door. Do you see it? And he said, I never saw him before that day naked. Who? The guy who visited him. Do you see it? He's dragging his garment behind him. Muhammad, he opened the doors for people who they are coming to his house totally naked. And by the way, the Muslim, they will say to you, Da'if, because this is embarrassing. However, Da'if is approved. Anytime you see something in my screen, you can search like certain words in the same thing, like is in it. You can search like I did not see him naked before nor afterward, you know, and search it. You will find the same hadith. Just type it in the freeze the window, you know, search for it. You will find it. Here we go. You know? All right. Good. 
Let us continue. Shall we continue? Is is he worth it? I mean, I don't know. He's just a stupid. We got him busted already. But let us go a little bit. This is what God does to him. At the same time, speak the Lord to Isaiah. God spoke to Isaiah, the son of Amos, saying, Go and lose the sackcloth from thy loins. You know the sackcloth that you're tying? Untie that. Yeah, untie that. The and sack. And put the, off thy shoe. Yeah, we answer this one anyway. Can look, look, look how filthy he says he is not even wearing G-string. Do you see how filthy that is? Do you see how filthy? I wish I was there. And then I will show you what mockery is about. This is why the way, by the way, this is why Muslims, they avoid me. Because Muslims, they like and they enjoy mockery of a Christians. And they choose Christians who they are very polite, who do not know much, so they cannot make mockery. And our mockery is going to be very harmful because we support it with the true evidence, not like your fraud. All right? Can you imagine God giving such instructions to his prophet? Imagine God is ordering Muhammad to go open the door. Muhammad is naked in the front of his companion. Moses, he run after a stone because Allah want to prove that the penis of Muhammad, the penis of Moses is, is okay. His emissary. Is that necessary? Is that a God teaching reading? Go walk, and three years in front of his mother, in front of his daughters. Sister. Where it says in the front of his mother. <laughs> <laughs> and where it says that <laughs> everybody is walking a prophet of God prove it prove it you coward son of Muta prove it we prove from your book that your prophet he mentioned the story of Musa's going naked totally running in the street showing his penis let us go to the second one you see he have papers he wrote them down because they say by the way they say he have a good memory he, he don't he's a, just a joker Isaiah had walked naked and barefoot three years. <laughs> you also will make you to do the same. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Allah bari ta'ala tells in the Quran. He says that he does not. He says, Qul, tell them, Inna Allah la ya'muru bil fasha. Allah does not command any shameful deed. Okay, Allah don't command any shameful deed. So if a person, he is a prophet or he is a monk in the desert and he is naked, it's not shameful deed. But Musa is running in the street and Allah made him do that, force him, is not shameful deed? What about the shameful deed of Muhammad going after his own wife and the flirting with her says to her, Praise be to Allah, the one who made my heart flip for you. Is that a shameful deed? To go to the wife of your own son, a married woman, not only she is married, married to your own son. This is not a shameful deed. So when the Quran says, Allah don't order to do shameful deed, prove it. Because the Quran order you to do shame deed, shameful deed, muta. Muhammad the flirting with married women, Muhammad raving married women. Muhammad is saying any woman she can give herself to the Prophet so he can if her. This is nothing but shameful deed. Continue. You say about Allah what you don't know? <laughs> As if Muhammad he knew. They asked Muhammad, what is the spirit? He says, Allah knows best. <laughs> took him a took him couple of weeks to answer, you know? They say, you know. Imagine, guys, a guy who claimed to be a prophet. They said to him, what is the spirit? Do you speak about Allah what you don't know? You cannot do that. No, Allah, we know. now we know about Allah after Muhammad told us he is the one who is the, the, the big boob vendor. This is Allah. The one who provides wine. This is Allah. Okay? But one of the most things about Allah too, that he is the one, you talk about Allah what you don't know. Hmm. What verse I should mention about this? Ah, should we talk about Allah the scientist or about Allah promised us version or about Allah promised us boys horny boys hmm? chapter 52 verse number 24 is that a shameful behavior of someone who claimed to be holy to promise me in heaven 
80,000 little boys who they are very white because no black is allowed to be in heaven. And those boys are very pretty. Is that a shameful behavior to have a slavery of boys or it's not? Huh? And what those boys will do to me exactly and why they are 80,000 at least. This is the lowest reward, 80,000 boys. Hey, Fairuz, how are you? I heard that you left Islam, my friend. Do you want to call me and tell me about it? Fairuz, he used to keep calling me liar, 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 liar. And I heard now he left Islam. Good for you. So that is God. This is not shameful. It's not shameful that God will take the wife of Pharaoh and the mother of Mary and give it to Muhammad so he can sleep with her. This is not shameful. Did that? What do you think if somebody says to you, Allah will give your mother to Christian prince? Is that shameful promise? Is it or not? Coward. Okay, let's take one call only from Fairuz. Let me open my Skype Fairuz for you. Okay. Let us see where is Pharaoh's. I was going to block you, by the way, because I give up with you. Uh, text me, Pharaoh's. I don't see you. Yeah, when you are, if you are in YouTube, in the Skype, text me, please. So you see, you know, when the Muslim they speak about shameful, isn't it shameful to promise me little girls to, to sleep with? Isn't it shameful to have sex with a child she is six years old? A Muslim speak about shameful. Isn't it shameful that you are allowed to rent your daughter three days, three nights to somebody and get paid? Not to rent, like to, let's say, employ me, employment to work and to clean. We said Feroz, Feroz called me, only Feroz. Who is this guy calling? Hello? Hello? Yes, this is you, Feroz? Yes. Oh, Feroz, how are you doing, my friend? Yeah, I'm doing good. So uh, I, I see a, even a change in your voice. What happened? You used to be angry from me and you call me so angry and now you sound like different. Yeah, it was uh, very annoying actually. I used to see your videos and used to mock, mock, um, mock our religion a lot. So, yeah. yeah, but you see, like, I, I, I notice, know. I don't know if people notice guys that Farouz's voice changed. I mean, I'm not saying the voice, I mean the tone, the way he used to talk, he was angry, upset, he hit me. Now I see peace in his voice. I see something different. Is that true, Feroz? Yeah, actually, yes. So, Feroz, why, why you decide to leave Islam? I mean, you always you keep me, you, you call me liar, prove it, you are a liar, that's not true. So, all, uh, for how long, how many times you call me, call me liar? How many times you did that? Like uh, many times, I can't even count it. Maybe hard to count, right? Maybe maybe thirty, maybe fifty. I don't know how many times you call me. You call you call me to call me liar. Hmm. And what do you think? Yeah. Why, why? But why at that time you were calling me liar? I don't know. It was uh, hard to accept all the things you were saying. So it was not comfortable actually. Yeah, so it's just because it's hard because to accept. The things that I listened is like I was listening it for the first time. Yeah, I never uh, listened it. Before mm. seeing your videos, I never knew about these things. And 
for the first time hearing it from you like it was like obviously you must be lying so so the yeah, first time you heard me it was very harmful for you like you were so upset right yeah and did you think at that time that i hate you like you know i'm speaking obviously maybe i hate muslims maybe you thought this way yeah obviously what, what do you think now do you think really i hate muslims or i love them no actually now i know that you are saying the truth but at that time it was not like that yeah but now you know for sure that we love muslims we don't hate them otherwise you know you see if i hate you why i want to spend my time to show you and explain to you i mean life is short why i want to spend my time answering faroos showing faroos if i hate faroos you know i don't care faroos you go to hell go to hell if i hate you right but because we care for the muslims and we love the muslims we are trying to help the muslims and now here we notice that after some time you check everything I say and you notice this is true and you decide to leave Islam. Yeah, right. It was very hard to accept it, but uh, I, I was doing my research and I found that everything you were saying was uh, right too. So, so, yeah. so, so Farouz, did you did you did you accept the Messiah as your savior? Yes, I did. I mean to that, Hallelujah. We are so happy for you. So now you believe that the Messiah is your Lord and your Savior and Muhammad is a, a false prophet, correct? Yeah, I accept. Uh, uh, that's wonderful, my friend. What about your family now? Did your family learn that you left Islam? No, uh, I never didn't uh, told them yet, but I will tell them in future. All right. What if you need... No, I'm not having that much confidence to tell, uh, tell them the truth. Oh, be confident, be strong, don't worry. And if you want, if you need my help, you want them to call me and speak to me, I will be happy to help them so they can leave Islam too. Sure, sure, I will let them know. Yeah, well, I'm happy for you, uh, Farouz, even though you were calling me liar many times, but here we go. <laughs> Welcome to the club yeah, of the yeah, saved just, one. <laughs> yeah, it, I'm happy for you. Look how many people here, they are happy for you, Farouz. And look how many... How many people they are so excited that a soul was saved the bible says uh, happiness will be in the kingdom of god for one soul is being saved so your soul my friend is priceless you are not just a human for god you are a child of god according to the bible so you are not a slave of allah no more you are a free man and you are not only a free man you are free by the lord and you are a child of god imagine the difference the Quran says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْإِنسَ وَالْجِنْ إِلَّا لَيَعْبُدُ I did not create genie and mankind except to worship. Our God don't want that. He don't need worshippers. He love you. Even though He is your God, He created you and He wanted to share His glory with you for He loves you. God do not need slaves. God do not need worshippers. Your worship will not bring any good to God, but God who loves you, he wants you to be with him in his house, in his kingdom. It's all about love, my friend. God who needs worshippers is not God. God who is lonely, he needs people to pray. Do you remember the hadith where it says, Muhammad, he said, if not, if you don't commit sin, Allah will destroy you and bring people who commit sin. Do you remember it? Yeah, it was like related to destiny, right? Right. Destined to sin, right. not any but but what kind of else. yeah but but you notice here this hadith approved approve to us that Muhammad is a fraud because what kind of God he wants you to commit sin and the purpose is what just because he wants you to big big for forgiveness I mean look at this hadith in the front of us on screen guys by him Muhammad saying by him who is hand my life if you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you by those who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah. This God is a filthy creature and he is lonely and he enjoy destruction and he enjoys slavery. Because you see, if you don't commit sin, what he will do? He will destroy you. But this is against the teaching of God. God don't want us to commit sin, supposedly. God, he sent his prophet, so we will not commit sin. So how come if you don't commit sin, Allah will kill you? Because the purpose of your existence is to seek and to beg. 
You want beggars. You want people. Oh God, forgive me. I commit sin. If you don't do that, he's not happy. This is kind of a kind kind of illness. If you go to a doctor and see somebody is doing that to you, like you know, he wants you to be wrong, and then he enjoy you asking for forgiveness. That is a physical like a physiology a, 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 a illness. A person who is sick, who enjoy seeing somebody is wrong, asking for forgiveness. So if you if you are not wrong, Allah will kill you. If you are not committing sin, Allah will destroy you. So why why he will destroy you? Because if you don't commit sin, you will not need his forgiveness. That's mean Allah is not needed. So the God of Islam is obviously a Satan. What do you think, Pharaohs? Shocking thing is that we never learned this thing in our mosque. So, um, like they never, they only tell about good things, like what Muhammad did and what led us for us. And they never uh, tell the other side of the story. They always push the positive side. Yeah. So this is why we should not go. Why, especially those Muslim YouTubers, they are a bunch of liars, as you see. And the truth is coming. Like even the that now, he is making fun of what is written in his book, not in our book. He's saying it's a shameful behavior to make your prophet walk naked when it's his God who made Moses walk naked. And the Bible did not say what he's saying. It's a shameful behavior to make a drink, to give a drink alcohol to someone who's dying because of his pain. But it's not a shameful behavior that his God is saying that wine next to big breast in heaven. And not only that, God is saying in the Quran supposedly that Allah, he made wine as a sign from him and to make good provision, which means to drink from it and to make money from it. It's not a shameful behavior to have sex with the children, but it's a shameful behavior to give a drink for the one is dying to ease his pain. This is how they switch the truth upside down. This is why we should be careful. Doesn't matter who we are, Christian, Muslims, Hindus, Jews, anyone who says something to us, check it out. And you will find that those people they are lying there's no honesty on those statements and then we will find that everything they say it is actually in their book not in our book and this is why i say that islam is like a whore she worked as a porn star and she claimed that she is virgin but here <laughs> here we take off the panty of Allah and we show everybody the private part of Allah exposing his private part, which is nothing but the private part of the devil. Anything else you want to add, Fairuz? Uh, yeah, nothing else. I just want to say that uh, the, your, your, your way of teaching is, I, I must say that it is very, uh, very right. You should do this teaching. You should continue doing this because uh, initially, yeah, of course, initially we will like, feel like you are hating us, you are mocking us, but as time goes by, we get, you know, get to know the truth. So, every day, like, I, I, I used to uh, search the truth, like, are you saying the truth or not? I used to uh, watch the videos. I even called one of my imams and he, he told me that uh, you cannot trust the websites and all. They are all, you know, spreading Islamophobia and... Yeah, so yeah, yeah, you have to search it by yourself. No one, none will, no, no one will help you. Yeah. See, this is this is an answer actually for those Christians who say they are very tough with the Muslims. As you see, my way is very effective, and maybe if I am not tough with Farouz, he will not leave Islam. Maybe if I am so easy, and you know, he will not leave Islam. But because I am tough, he says, and this is his opinion. He agreed that my way is very effective, and now here we go. He decided to leave the cult of Muhammad. Yeah, uh, Farouz. Yeah. Uh, if there is any, any churches close to your area? If there is any Christian churches close to your area? Yeah, there is actually. Okay. Well, I, because you, you need to read the Bible now. You need to to uh, to to understand it, and you you know it's it's better if you go and get baptized. Because when you get baptized, yeah, my friend, I, you you will you will receive. Yeah, a, I want to do that. Yeah, yeah I, baptized I is very important. That, but, uh, baptized yeah. is very important because you are like it's like you know it's not only uh, uh, it's not just ritual. It is literally you will receive a gift from God by being His child by announcing yourself in front of the Lord 
that today I am your child. I wash myself from my sin before, from the cult I was following, from the pagan Muhammad, the black stone kisser, and today I am yours. So baptism is very important and the Holy Spirit will fill your heart and will accompany you for the rest of your life. Yes, yes, I will do it. But uh, I have to, you know, also look after my uh, life because people know that who I am. They, they will, you know, try to harm me. All right. So I will do that. Yeah, I will for sure do that. I want well, let me know when, when you get baptized so we can have a little party for you here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. I will let you know. All right, my friend. So I can call you brother now. I'm not going to call you Farouz. You know, you, you drive me crazy, <laughs> Farouz. <laughs> you are pronouncing my name uh, wrong. It's Firoz, not Farouz. Uh, how I say it? Cor sorry. It is Firoz, not Farouz. Farouz. Ah, because in Arabic, Feroz, Feroz. you see, in Feroz. Arabic we we use the name Farouz, so Farouz. Okay, Farouz, not Farouz. Farouz. Okay. Farouz. Firoz. 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 Oh, hold on. Viros. 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 Fi. 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 Viros. Viros. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. right. Okay, Viros. Okay, Viros. Well, um, uh, no problem, my friend. I will call you. I will call you Peter. So the Lord, maybe he make you the rock in your, in your home. And your home will be built in a very strong rock of faith, of belief, and to be a messenger for the Lord between your family and your tribe and your people. So you can bring them to Christ. All right. I'm into that. Sir. All right. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Take care. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Yeah, Feroz. You know, he used to drive me. Like, I mean, I keep explaining to him. He called me liars each time. He, you know, he called me he, he, liar. This is a lie. It's not true. You see the text if you go in the videos in the previous month. I mean, this guy. Anything I say, he say it's a lie. You are a liar. Where do you get this from? It's not true. You know, and he get angry and he call me like he's, he keep calling and sometimes even I hang up on him. Sometimes I don't even take his call because it's became too much annoying because I show it to him in the screen and still he say it's not true. It's in the screen. It's not true. Why? I understand. He, he told you it's hard. It's hard to believe that this is happening all his life. Believing in a man, he thought he is holy. All his life believing in a God, he thought he is holy. And then suddenly you come to a person, his name is a Christian prince, and you are saying to me, my God is a piece of garbage. Proving it to me from my book, that's not right. That's not easy. However, thanks to the Lord, and thanks for the support of people here, we were able to help Pharaohs, and the Lord opened his eyes to leave the cult of Muhammad, and to accept the Christ. Maybe I should continue this uh, uh, video uh, uh, maybe some other time because he said more things in this video uh, did that and we can get him busted. But what we have until now is enough to, to prove that Muhammad is a liar and those who follow him they try to defend by lying to us about even our book not only about their book. So I want people who download this video cut it pieces please about the that saying because other things you know is not you know, I mean, if you want to make the video short, it's up to you, by the way, you can load the whole video. But if you want to deliver the message about D that it's better if you make it topic by topic, cut it, add subtitle in your language, change the title. Look, when people, they copy my videos, as an example, they keep the same title. Try to be creative, depend on the topic in the video you are cutting and posting. Okay, depend on the topic. So I want to say thank you for all of you guys. I want to say thank you for Farouz. I want to say thank you for the Lord for helping me to make Farouz leave Islam and accept the Christ as Lord and Savior. And let us pray, all of us, that not only Farouz, he left Islam. Let us pray that his family, they will leave Islam and join the family of Christ soon. Let us pray not only his family, his village, his town, his city, let us pray that all the Muslims, they will see the truth and the truth will set them free. Let us pray that we and Muslims, we will love each other and we will not be filled with hate of the devil. The devil always, and he is the only one, want us to hate each other. And that is Allah. As he said in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 51, take not Christians and Jews as a friends. 
And if you take them, you are one of them. Who is the one who don't want us to be friends? And it's for the benefit of who not to be friends? The devil. Who you want, who want you to be an enemy to everybody? The devil. He wants you to be in war. He wants you to be a criminal. He wants you to be to kill so you will be killed. And then he will enjoy the bloodshed. The Bible says those who live by the sword, by the sword will die. And my friend, trust me, it's not only you have swords. We have bigger swords, but we don't want to use them. We want to have peace. We want to love the Muslims. We want the Muslim to flourish, to have a good life. Why and what benefit will it bring having a sword, killing each other? That is the benefit of the devil. The God who says I will spread hatred and enmity between the Christian cannot be God. For he is spreading hate. Our God, he wants to spread love. For God, he loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. For he loved the world. The whole world. Farouk's family is included, even though they are not Christian yet. The Lord, he loved them. That is our Lord. Who is yours? Your Lord is the one who said, O oh, Muslims, take not Jews and Christians as friends or protectors. And if you do, you are unjust. How that can be you unjust? How if I am a friend and a friendly to someone, he is not from my belief, that will make me unjust. How if I am nice to my neighbor and he is a Muslim, that will make me unjust. How if I friend Farouz and he was still a Muslim and he is next door to me, that will make us unjust. That is the devil, my friend. The devil, he don't want us to have peace. For if we cannot be friends, we have to be enemies. This is how Muhammad, he guaranteed that a Muslim will never be a friend to a Christian and he will never be a friend to the Jews. So war will continue, bloodshed will continue, and we kill each other and your kids will kill my kids and my kids will be killing your kids. The only one have a benefit from such an evil teaching is the devil. And not only that, the Quran says that the one who take Christians as a friends, they have a disease in their heart. Why is that? How that can be a disease? How to be a friend to a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu or a Buddha or even an atheist? How that can be a disease in the heart? Obviously, the one who said that he himself is suffering from a disease. It's called hatred and evil. Hatred is a disease. Kill you first. I go sleep and don't think about hating Muslims. I don't want to kill any Muslim. I don't want to hurt any Muslim. He go to sleep. He dream about killing me. He is eating. He dream about hurting me. He's talking to his wife. He wish he can get rid of me. Your life is screwed. Your hate is killing you. You cannot enjoy even your food. You can't enjoy your day because the first thing you do in the morning is remembering hateful thoughts. For me, the first thing I remember in the morning that love everybody, including those who curse me, as Jesus said. He said, love your enemy. Bless those who curse you, persecute you. So you curse me, I pray for you. Do you see the difference? And that actually have a health benefit, the teaching of Christ, the proof that it is godly, not only because it is love, but it is healthy. One of the reasons to be happy is not to hate. And if you are happy, you will be healthy. You see, people die because of heart, heart attack. Why? Anger, etc. Not because they are happy. I mean, the more, the more angry, the more upset you are, the more you are boiling inside you, the more you hate people, the more you are going to die fast. For your hate is killing you. It's poison. A person who forgive, he have no pain. He live. He live his day, he's enjoying. He's not thinking of revenge, even of those who did hurt him. And that is very healthy. And you know, 
if you practice one sentence of Christ, love your enemy, imagine how what, what we can have in this earth. If we practice one sentence of Christ, the whole earth will be heaven, not earth no more. We will not even need police. We will not even need army. We will never see war. Imagine how much money human beings spend in war machines. How much army you have in India, how much army you have in Pakistan, and they will kill each other. If this money, which is needed badly in both countries, spent for building schools, hospitals, farms, how much life will be better? One sentence of Christ's teaching better than all the books of the world. Just one. Love your enemy. I never heard, I never saw, and I will never see anyone. He is reaching that point to say, love your enemy. And remember, this is something being said 1400 years ago. No, 2000 years ago, way before Muhammad. 1400 years ago, human beings should be advanced. Muhammad, he came, he took us backward to the cave time, slaughtering each other. Jesus came that you know came to us two thousand years ago, not fourteen years ago. Yet he said, "Love your enemy." Today, in the year two thousand twenty, who can say, "Love your enemy"? No one except Jesus. Go in the street, see people everywhere. They are burning in America, in France, in in, in Beirut, in, in in I mean everywhere. Libya, Syria, you name it. The devil is working so good for his benefit, not for our benefit. So by following the teaching of Christ, we can defeat the devil and we can have a peaceful life, all of us, no matter who we are, Christian, Jews, Hindus, Buddhas, atheists, doesn't matter. Love your enemy. And this is why Muslims should understand that when we speak against Islam, not because we hate you, we don't but because we love you. And actually, we don't even consider you as an enemy, even though for us, we knew that you believe that we are enemy. I know many people, they wish and they pray for my death. Actually, I remember once a guy in Paltok, he made a room of a prayer for Muslims, and they were praying, may Allah kill a Christian prince. May Allah destroy a Christian prince. May Allah, etc. And all the Muslims in the chat room, they were saying, Amin. Less than 48 hours after I heard the news that he had a heart attack. The one who was praying for my death. And we never saw him again. I will never pray for you to have heart attack. Even if you are the one who hate me to death. I will never. That is not from God. If I was praying to Pharaoh's evil prayer, how Pharaoh's will see the truth and how Pharaoh's will be saved? And then what kind of God am I enjoying? And I ask him to join me if I am a hateful person. That is not from God. Thank you, Sam. Uh, so, uh, you know, remember that what they try to do is kind of hilarious. They are desperate. They are bankrupt. And we can always get them busted. But you cannot get them busted unless you have knowledge. And knowledge is the key of victory against the devil. The Bible says my people have been destroyed because of their ignorance. So don't be ignorant. Take reference. Read carefully, take notes, think about what you heard, think about the Bible, read it once, twice, three times, read it and think deep, deeply, don't do what the Muslims do, recite, we don't recite, we need to read, we need to understand, we do not need memory, we need understanding, the Lord, he will not be proud of you if you can recite a verse blindly, 
but he will be happy to see that you understand what he said. Those who recite, they recite. They don't understand. And this is why none of the Muslim can understand and explain anything to us. They are reciting. Muhammad himself, he recite. But he didn't know what he's talking about. That is a sign of ignorance. Actually, the Quran have a verse. It's fit perfectly with Muhammad. Where it says that similarity of those who carry the Torah is the same as a donkey carrying the books. You will see a person who recites the Quran in Arabic, but yet he doesn't speak Arabic. Isn't it this is silly? Isn't it silly that Muhammad he says that those who carry the Torah in their back and they don't understand that they are the same as donkeys, as if he knew the Torah? That is the words of Muhammad. And now we ask the Muslims, don't you Muslim you say that Muhammad cannot read? So he cannot read the Hebrew. So if he carried the Torah, what he understand of the Torah, they will say nothing. What about the Quran? They say he cannot read even Quran, he cannot read Arabic. So Muhammad carrying a book, it's written in Arabic. Do he understand the book? No, still, because he cannot read the book. If we translate the Torah to Muhammad into Arabic, is he going to understand the Torah? No, still he cannot read it. And that's exactly what the verse is saying. Muhammad is the same as a donkey who carry books, but he don't understand them. Remember Muhammad once he said, he asked the Jews to bring the Torah and he put his hand over it and he said, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. Imagine how stupid it is to say, I believe in thee, but you cannot read thee. You know what I mean? Yes, you understand what I'm saying? How I say, I believe in thee, but I cannot read thee. How I say I believe in thee and the one who sent thee, if I cannot confirm that thee is sent from thee by reading thee. You know what I mean? If you put in the front of me a piece of paper, have whatever, I don't know what's written there, and then I place my hand on it and say I believe in thee. Is that, isn't it this is stupid? Isn't it this is a donkey behavior? This is exactly what the verse here is speaking about, proving to us that Muhammad is nothing like a, but a donkey. Carry books, but you don't understand them. The same as Ahmad Didat, who is fabricating stories. In fact, those stories are exist in his book, and we get him busted. So I want to say thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. I know we don't have many people today because we did not, you know, mention this uh, session. We go. This is not the normal time we go in. Usually, I go in the morning, but I said to myself. Good time, never, never bad time. Good time to be with you guys. May the Lord bless you. Good time to learn, good time to teach, good time to hear Faroos, accepting the Messiah as Lord, as Savior. Thank you all for downloading the video, adding subtitle, cut it pieces, make it shorter so people they can watch easy and people they can learn faster. God bless you, Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon again. Take care. Bye-bye.